Okay, it's going to say fully simplify um, by collecting like terms. Okay, that's it. So then you're going to see a question, much like what we just finished doing, right? We could do, um, we could make it up, and again, n k x y these are all variables right they're just the rods okay that's all they are and the numbers will always be the little squares okay so it doesn't matter what variable is in the question they're just rods okay the rods from the math thing here this what's this thing called polypad okay so let's just say for an instance I'll create a question. We'll do two questions or three questions, okay? And we'll call it. So again, let's maybe do. Uh, okay. So here's what you got. This is your question, okay? And it, it wants you to fully simplify by collecting like terms, okay? Now, keep in mind, like some of you have heard of bed mass before. The B stands for brackets, so whatever would be in here, you would do first, right? Some people like do it following bed mass to a T, which you should. But the problem with bed mass in this particular question is that there's nothing to be done in here, right? Those are not like terms, right? You cannot add the rods and the little squares together. Okay, so there's nothing to be done with the with the brackets, right? So we're like done. There are no exponents in this question. Okay? There is no division in this question, which lets gets you to the multiplication piece. Okay, what's multiplication? It's an area model, right? Where we did length times width. Okay? In this particular question, here's what you got. You have 2 and x minus 4. Okay. Now, I'm also going to say something for everybody's benefit because this will come up again. Anytime you see just a variable or something just floating, there is an imaginary number one sitting out front. Okay. Because one times anything is itself, right? Same thing. If you divide anything by 1, you're allowed to write anything you want over 1 because 6 divided by 1 is still 6. Okay, so there's these, like, imaginary 1s floating all over the place, right? Wherever you basically want them to suit your eye, okay? And the reason why I write this and bring this to your attention is when I do 2 times 1 with an X on it, 2 times 1 is 2, with an X on it is X. Okay. Then if you take a look at the next one here, oops. We'll do two multiplied by four with the negative. The negative piece is what everybody forgets. Alright? It's just two times four with a negative on it. Okay? If this was also a negative, that would change things, but it's not. We'll do maybe I'll do another one of those questions in a minute. I'm missing a stick here. Okay. So two times four is eight. With the negative, or two times negative four is negative eight. Okay. This right here, your area replaces this and so you get 2x minus 8 and then don't forget about the plus 6 on the end okay and so you just do the math on that now you cannot add rods to numbers these remember are the little squares and this is the big rods you cannot mix those two things together okay and so your final answer 
I don't see any other rods to be added or subtracted in this question. Don't forget your equal signs. Sorry. A little caveat. So I better see in my answer, I better see a 2x up here. Because there's, there's nothing to add or subtract it to. Right? Now the other piece of this is, well, it looks like I can add these two things together. Right? So then you just do it. Right? If we needed to, we could go to here. Oh, I'm running out of space. Interesting. You could take Right? Maybe you guys need more time doing this. I don't know. We uh, Sorry, I'm at the draw line. It's telling us we have negative 8. Sorry, almost said 6. Okay, it's telling us we have negative 8. And I'm going to add 6. Right? We've got 6 of these. I just don't want anybody, when it comes to the solving piece, when we, or, without getting too far ahead, when we come to Monday's lessons, if you do not do this part right, you're going to get the wrong answer every time. Okay. So I'm just going to group these a little bit differently. Okay. And what are we going to do? We're going to create zero pairs. All right. So I'm just going to line these up. Well, there's a zero pair, there's a zero pair, there's a zero pair, there, there, there. What am I left with? Negative two. So I come back to my answer, I say, okay, negative eight plus six, that should be negative two. And that's your final answer for this, fully simplified. Why is it fully simplified? because I cannot add these two things together anymore. There's nothing else to be done, right? That's it. There are no more like terms to combine. You're done. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Let me do one more hard one and then you guys will be free to go. Okay? And I'm here till 2.30 with office hours in case you guys are stuck, okay? So, I'm just gonna make this one up. Okay, this is honestly is probably as hard as you're going to get. Okay, and there's a few things to be careful of in here. <clears throat> okay, you'll notice the first part looks easy enough. Okay, we just finished doing something like that. Okay, so and I'll, show, I'll introduce you to something else too in case you guys don't like the table. Okay, so this is just all your aside work. Okay, I'm going to keep it aside. So I'm just going to look at here. Okay, and I'm just going to figure out, okay, where's my table? Well, we're going to go 6 and x plus 3. All right, don't forget, you can always write a 1 in front of the x. Okay, and then you just fill it out. 6 times 1 is going to be 6 with an x on it. 6 times 3, positive 3 this time, that's nice, is positive 18. Okay, so this replaces the green piece from over on the left. Okay. Okay, and then and then we look at this piece now. Let's just I'll just change the color. Okay. So now now I can do a table on on the blue piece. Okay. The catch here is though. What are you gonna write out front? That's the problem, right? I know what the top I know what the top is. It's uh, x minus 4. But what do I write out front? That's the problem, right? We're like, okay. Well, there's no number there. That's a problem. But 
if you think back to what we just finished saying, you can always write a negative 1 anywhere you want. Or a 1, sorry. Not a negative 1, a 1. Right? And I could put 1 here too if I wanted. Okay? So I'm going to write negative 1 is the important part. You got to take the sign that's out front and put it here. Okay? And so we just do the same math now, right? There's still a 1 in front of the x. That's no problem. So you just go negative 1 this time multiplied by x is negative x or negative 1x. I'll add the 1. And then negative 1 times negative 4. Now you be careful. This is an instance where two negatives make a positive, right? So a negative 1 times negative 4, that's going to be positive 4. Okay? And then this, the area inside of here, replaces that entire blue piece. All of this. Right? So basically your next line is going to be this green piece up here and this blue piece. So you're just going to write them out verbatim what they are. Okay? And what you're going to notice is they're going to turn into a question from this morning. Okay? You're going to get 6x plus 18 minus 1x plus 4. You collect them together, or clean them up. This is the point where sometimes I like using, uh, you know, I, I like identifying the things that are the same just for my own visual assurance, I suppose. Okay. So you have like the magenta pieces or the pink pieces and then you have the yellow pieces. And you can only add yellows and you can only add the pink pieces. I just use the colors because... I don't necessarily want to write out six rods, right? And 18 little single things, right? And four and uh, a negative, a negative rod. Okay, I don't necessarily want to draw that out. You guys can build it. Absolutely, you can build it. The problem becomes, and you saw even the, when I started this lesson today, like when the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger, you don't necessarily want to represent those big questions with the algebra tiles. It doesn't mean that you throw the algebra tile work out, out of your head. It's all there and usable, right? But all you got to do is group the things that are the same, right? So I'm just going to rewrite this line and I'm going to put the magenta things together and I'm going to put the yellow things together. How did you make the minus 1x and the minus, sorry, the minus 1 and the minus 4 into a plus 4? Like okay. how do you, how do you, where'd you make the plus, where'd you get the plus from? So anytime you multiply two negatives together, what do you get? Uh, positive. All That's right. it, buddy. That's it. My bad. Alright, no worries. It's a good question. Somebody else is going to have that question. Right? I am inevitably going to come up. And it's inevitable going to happen, like, somebody's going to have a negative where there should be a positive, and they're going to have a positive where there should be a negative, okay? That's going to happen. I have no doubt it's going to happen. Okay? It's like we should just try and like work that little bug out now so that when you guys go to solve things on Monday or when we do Monday's lesson, if you have a wrong sign here, right here I just drew in case anybody didn't see, it messes up the whole question. You get wrong answers just from one sign. Okay, so the more organized you can be, and this is why I like promoting these tables okay they keep everything nice and straight it's very it's not that it's not impossible to make sign errors but it makes it less likely okay and until we can like wean ourselves off of the tables they they organize the information nicely right you can kind of see okay well next thing I gotta multiply negative 1 times negative 4 well, that turns into a positive okay a little bit harder to make mistakes okay and I'm gonna erase that before I forget to okay Right, so there's my two magenta pieces. I've just I'm just grouping things, okay? I'm collecting like terms. Right? And then I'm left with the plus 18 plus 4. 
Those are the yellow pieces. Okay. Now you're free to do math. The math that you did in grade two, where you add two numbers together and subtract two numbers together. Okay. That's it. Once you've grouped them, you don't have to worry about what you can and can't add or subtract together. They're, you've collected the like terms. Now all you do is say, okay, well, 6 minus 1, that's 5. 5 what? 5 x's. Right? And then 18 plus 4? That sounds like 22 to me. Right? Can you do anything else with these? No, you cannot. Because these are numbers and these are variables. And these do not, they cannot mix them. They are apples and bananas. I can't even, I don't even know if I spelled bananas right. <laughs> hey, I pick an easier fruit. Okay. They're not the same. You can't add them together. Yes, they are fruit, but they're different. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to leave all that there. Okay. This is your final answer. I'm going to choose a different color too. Okay, nothing more to be done. That's all I want you to do for those last 18 questions or whatever it is. You're just cleaning up the mess that's put on the page into something nice. That's what simplifying means. Okay. Now, I have absolutely no idea how today went from your standpoint. Okay. I feel as if that's. Every time I teach this stuff, it seems to get a bit of, I feel as if it gets better. Like my, I feel better about my explanations of things. I have no idea how that's actually registered with you guys. Okay. Now where I'm going to find that out is through the formatives, right? Or you guys coming in asking questions, right? But eventually like I should find out from you through the formatives before we get to a summative, how that actually went. Okay. Um, that being said, I've had the same question a few times today. Like, where do I submit these? Uh, where do I submit the um, homework questions? I don't want the homework questions. Okay, they're for you to work on um, at your own pace. And if you need help with them, you come to the office hours. Okay. Um, where I find out if you know how to do something is on the formatives. Okay. And I'll try to include all the answers with everything. Well, I don't want to get too carried away. I'll try to include the answers everywhere. Okay. Like today's sheet on the last two pages gives you the answers to those questions. So you know if you did them right or wrong. Okay. I'll try to keep up with that. It's a lot bouncing two courses. But 